chapter seven. It's all about right triangles and right triangles only. We've had lots of chapters where we talk about triangles in lots of different lights. Um, in this case, we're only talking about right triangles. So today, we're gonna start talking with Pythagorean theorem. This is not new to you, but you will have new information today about the Pythagorean theorem. So starting with the basics, Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. This is the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You guys have seen this before. Um, a and the b is legs. The legs are the two sides that make that 90 degrees. The C side is the hypotenuse, which is directly across from your 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse will always be the longest side. So A and B are interchangeable. This can be A, this can be B or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Same thing here, B squared plus A squared equals C squared means the same thing. So look at my first example here. It says find the unknown side length, show the answer in simplest radical form. We've talked about simplest radical form before, but I haven't really given you guys much instruction on it, so I wanna do that today. Okay, so we have our right triangle, which means we are allowed to use Pythagorean theorem. These two are my A and my B side because they make that 90 degrees. This is my C side. So the C side is the side that I do not know. So let's plug this into the Pythagorean theorem. Six squared plus five squared equals C squared. So when we're solving an equation, going back to our basic equation solving, we need to get that variable by itself. In this case, we're gonna have to square, add, and get rid of that little number there, that exponent. So the first thing we're gonna do is square. Six squared is 36, five squared is 25. Then we're gonna add those together. When I add those together, I get 71, 61, sorry, 61. So at this point, please don't just leave that two off. Use our basic equation solving. When you have to get rid of a number, you have to do the opposite operation. So going back to, you know, if you had x plus one equals five, you would do the opposite operation to that one to make it go away. That's your basic skills. So in this case, we're getting rid of that little two. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So again, going back and making sure that this makes sense to you. When I take three and square it, I get nine. If I take nine and square root it, I get three. It goes full circle, they undo each other. So when I go to get rid of that two, the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So I square root on the right to get that variable by itself because squaring and square rooting cancel each other out. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side. That's our basic equation solving. So on the right, the square and the square root cancel out and I have C left. On the left, I have the square root of 61. Now it's up to this point, you guys probably just put that in a calculator and round it. I don't want you to do that anymore. I want you to get comfortable with simplest radical form. So, so far, does this make sense? Any questions so far? Okay, let me go on the front board to have more room to talk about simplest radical form. Okay, what simplest radical form means is that you don't have any perfect square factors under the radical. That's what that means. So let me give you an easy example to start talking about this. So square root of 200. If that was your answer and I said, give me that answer in simplest radical form, what I'm asking you to do is look for a perfect square factor. Who can tell me my list of perfect squares? Keep going, you got it. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, uh, 49, 64. Good job. Uh, 81. One more. 100. Good job. So if you don't know how he came up with this list so quickly, hopefully you can start seeing that pattern. One times one, two times two, three times three, four times four, five times five, and so on. Um, What's the reason why these are perfect squares? Because like it's the number times itself. So if you like if you um, choose the square, like two times. You got it. Yeah. You got it. So these are perfect squares because when I square root them, I get a whole number. 
When I square root four, I get a whole number. When I square root nine, I get a whole number. When I square root 25, I get a whole number. Okay, that's the reason why they are perfect squares. So this list you need to be familiar with. I don't expect you to just, you know, rattle them off like that, but you should be able to list them fairly easy because those are important. So this list is important to see which of these numbers goes into this evenly. It should jump out at you that 100 is a factor of 200. You guys see that? Okay, so I'm gonna break this down and the way I wanna break this down is to see which of these numbers goes into it evenly. In this case, it's 100. So I'm gonna rewrite this using my perfect square factor. I'm gonna say it's two times 100 because they mean the same thing. The next thing I'm gonna do is simplify it. So this two, when I square root it, it becomes a decimal. So I don't wanna move that right now. That's staying under that radical. This 100 can be square rooted and got a whole number. So I'm gonna do this operation to this number. When I do that operation, I get 10, which means that number gets moved to the outside. So this is my perfect, I'm sorry, this is my answer. This is my um, simplest radical form of that answer. So it's almost like reducing fractions. You don't want two fourths, you want one half as an answer. That's this similar situation. So the reason why we do this is when you, if you were to just put this in your calculator and round, you use, lose some accuracy. In this case, you're not losing any accuracy because you're not rounding any numbers. This is a better answer because it's completely accurate. Does that make sense? Let's do one more. What if I said 75? What perfect square factor goes into 75? Should be fairly obvious. Good, 25 goes into that. So I can break this down into three times 25. Same thing what I'm gonna do is square root anything that's perfect, leave under the radical anything that's not. Three cannot be square rooted and get a whole number, so it stays put. I'm gonna perform this operation to this number. When I square root 25, I get five. This is my simplest radical form for 75. I wanna caution you that if you didn't pick the biggest the biggest number possible, you may have to do it again. So just verify that there's no perfect square factors under your radical, then you have simplest radical form. So far so good? Going back to our problem a minute ago, our answer was the square root of 61. Which of these perfect squares goes into 61 evenly? So when you have a number that you're not, you know, kind of, struggle with a bit, use your calculator. 61 divided by four, doesn't go in evenly. 61 divided by nine, doesn't go in evenly. 61 divided by 16, doesn't go in evenly. 61 divided by 25, no. And it, you can't go any further than that, that doesn't make any sense. So there's no perfect square factors that go into 61. So square root of 61 is simplest radical form. It can't be broken down any further. No different than as if I said, reduce one fourth. You can't, that's furthest you can go. Yes? Would you put a one on the left? No, ones are useless in this case. I mean, you can assume that it is there, but it's not needed. Okay, so far so good with this? Okay, let's go back over here and do that one problem we didn't do yet. So just to finish off this problem, C in simplest radical form is the square root of 61. Okay, one last problem. It says find the area. Now we're finding the area of the entire shape and it has to be broken down. To find the area, we need to know the base and the height. So this triangle here, the base is 13, the height is four. This triangle, the base is three and the height is four. So do that for me real quickly. Find the area of each of these and add them together.
So I'm hoping this is an easy one for you guys. This bigger triangle here, one half times the base is 13, the height is four. Should be able to do this pretty quickly. Half of four is two, so two times 13 is 26. The other triangle, the base is three, the height is four. Half of four is two, so three times two gives me six. We're gonna add both of those areas together, which gives me 32 inches squared. So anytime you're looking at any kind of problem that has units, if it has units in the problem, please make sure you have units in your answer. So the total area of this whole figure is 32 inches squared. Questions on that? Okay, moving on to Pythagorean triples. So Pythagorean triples are three positive integers that satisfy this equation. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. When we say satisfy, that means that it works. That means when you take A and square it, you take B and square it, and you add them together, it's the same as when you square C, meaning that the equation is balanced. There are no decimals with Pythagorean triples. That should make you guys happy. Common Pythagorean triples are ones that you'll see pretty frequently. I'm not gonna ask you to memorize them, but know what they are and know that there's a list. And I believe there's a longer list in your book. Uh, you probably have seen three, four, five. Sides of three, four, and five does make a right triangle. It's a common set of numbers for Pythagorean triples. All of these are common. But the biggest thing I want you to know about Pythagorean triples is that there is no decimals. They're all whole numbers. So we're gonna apply this with this example here. So the directions for this, it says, you're given two sides of a triangle and you don't know what sides they are. So you're given 40 and 41. All three side lengths are integers. What are integers? What's the definition of an integer? Kind of. It's a whole number. It's positive whole, negative whole, and zero. So there are no decimals in these scenarios. So when they say all three side lengths are integers, that means you cannot have a side length with a decimal. And together form a Pythagorean triple, find the length of the third side, and tell whether it is a leg or a hypotenuse. Okay, so I want you to kind of picture what's going on here. We have two sides. We could have a scenario that looks like this, and the C side is missing. Or we could have a scenario like this, where a leg is missing. We don't know which of these are. So we have to try each one and see which one works. So far so good? Okay, we're gonna try this scenario first just because that's what I'm picking off the top of my head. So we're gonna say 40 squared plus 41 squared equals C squared. So when I solve this, I wanna see if C is a whole number or a decimal. If it's a whole number, it works in this scenario. If it's a decimal, it doesn't and I have to try the other scenario. So who can help me out here? What's 40 squared? Anybody have Desmos open for me? What's 40 squared? 1,600. Good. What's 41 squared? You got it for me? Yeah. Uh, 1,681. What do I get when I add those together? Uh, Say it again. So I still need to get that C by itself, so I need to square root both sides. What's the square root of 3,281? Anybody have Desmos open can help me out? Uh, 57.2? Because it's a decimal, that means that this scenario does not work. So it's not two legs. I have to set it up using this scenario. So I'm gonna do A squared plus 40 squared equals 41 squared. So the bad news is you have to do two problems to figure it out. The good news is half the work's already done for you. So we already know that 40 squared is 1600. We know that 41 squared is 1681. So yeah, you have to do two equations, but a lot of the work's done for you. When I move this over by subtracting, I get a squared is 81. 
square root both sides, and I know now that A is nine. Because it's a whole number, that means that this scenario works. But remember, I also have to tell whether it's a leg or a hypotenuse. So what is nine? Leg. Is it a leg or is it a hypotenuse? If you look back here, it's a leg. So when you do these kinds of problems, make sure you have the unknown side and say whether it's a leg or a hypotenuse. Questions so far? One more example. So similar scenario, you can start with whichever scenario you want. I 